do you have a tip if someone wants to become a bug bounty hunter? What should he do? What is the how to start? Where to start? Uh huh. Um, so the cliche tip uh, would be just start, but that's that's the tip that everybody says. But it is actually also true because sometimes you you know if you want to be good at something, if you want to learn something, the first few weeks aren't like they're they're not a given. You need to put some effort in it, and effort it takes some of your attention and 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 some some encouragement to find. I think different bugs than other people do is I set myself a goal. I do like this little bit of role playing where I try to be the malicious hacker and I say, okay, I'm a hacker and I want to do this. I want, for example, to read the documents of the person in the other instance. I want to um, anonymize a user that clicks on my link, stuff like that. And I just like, I come up with the scenario and then it's for me, it's very easy to kind of put on that hat and see, okay, I'm now that hacker. What are all the ideas that pop into my head? So I'm not really going for the methodologies, not scanning every endpoint for IDOR and cross-site scripting. You may get lucky, but more hunters will, would have been before you. Mm -hmm. And if if I'm a, let's say when I'm a programmer and I don't have that many security skills, are is a bug bounty uh, program or bug bounty hunting, is this the right uh, place to start? Or should I start with some services like uh, labs or uh, capture the flag events or so? I think CTFs and labs are always good, but what we do see is that a lot of people, they, for some reason, they stick to the CTFs because they it gives them comfort to know that there's a bug. And you know, I, I love CTFs myself. We do we do a lot of them with integrity. Um, so I would say do both. Um, but as a programmer, what what is basically essentially you're competing, Bug Bounty is competing against others in speed. And every single year, new techniques uh, drop. And and for example, Al Albino Wax from, from Ports Vigor has like this great list of new hacking techniques every single year. And every every year for some reason he finds like this bug that can be automated against so many targets. Um, so I would say focus on those types of books, things that you know, new research that you can automate. And if you're then building the best scanner for that particular issue, you will sometimes get even more bounties than the people who do manual testing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how can I, so you mentioned before the, the term of, a, of back bounty hunters. So hunters begging for bounties, uh, uh, reporting very low issues. Uh, how do I make sure not to become a bug bounty hunter? And this is also why I discourage people to just do bug bounty full time from the get go, because then you really need the, the money. Uh, try to see bug bounty as a learning opportunity. And if like, don't set your expectations too high um, and, and, and try not to focus around the bounty. And if the bounty is lower than you think, if you feel like, <sighs> It deserved a higher bounty and in some cases this can be the case don't just say i was expecting more sometimes we see people doing that telling us and they were like yeah but why tell us something to work with i mean i'm always very happy if a researcher feels that their severity is too low to talk with the company and say okay but you know researchers feel this but very often people just say no i wanted more or i feel i feel like this is a high i feel like this is a medium you know, I, I am able to exploit it this way as well. People make mistakes and we will fix we will fix that then in that case, but try not to get emotional, try to not to focus on the money. And if you feel like, okay, I'm not happy with the situation, analyze it. Why is that? Why am I not happy and why should this change? Mm -hmm.